This segment of the news has been brought to you by Sun Oil Limited. Welcome back. A number of migrant arrests and appearances before the magistrate's court being reported by the Bahamas Department of Immigration. Immigration officials say over the past few days, the department on Grand Bahama detained a total of 47 migrants, including 29 Cuban nationals handed over to the immigration officials there and 18 other nationalities that were apprehended. On Thursday, June 16th, 20 Cubans, including 18 males, two females, were found in waters near Kisal Bank by the United States Coast Guard and turned over to the immigration officials on Grand Bahama on Monday, June 20th. On that same day at approximately 8 p.m., a team of immigration officers arrested 12 migrants, 11 Cubans, 6 males, 3 females, 2 minors, and a Jamaican male found in a duplex on Grand Bahama. This group was charged in the magistrate's court with overstaying and fined $500 or six months in jail at the Bahamas Department of Corrections, with the exception of the two minors and the Jamaican male, who after being processed were later released due to valid immigration visitor status. Further, on Thursday the 23rd, at approximately 9.30 p.m., a team of immigration officers arrested another group of six Cubans, three males, one female, and two minors found in a local hotel on Grand Bahama. One of the males in this group was charged in the magistrate's court with overstaying and fined $1,500 or eight months at the Department of Corrections. Further to the apprehension on Thursday, nine Cubans, eight males, and one female were found in waters near Kisal Bank by the U.S. Coast Guard officials and turned over to immigration on Grand Bahama on Monday, June 27th. Immigration officials say all court fines were paid with respects to these charges. The groups, with exception to the last group, were transported to the capital and are being held at the detention center pending deportation. The latter group is expected to arrive in the capital later this week. On Tuesday, the Ministry of Agriculture, Marine Resources and Family Island Affairs and the Food Agricultural Organization, or FAO, signed an agreement for the development of a digital territorial village on Eleuthera. In their efforts to assist with the transformation of agri-food systems in the Bahamas, the village is a hub to create linkages between rural and urban communities for digital ecosystems to drive the support of agribusiness in those targeted communities on the island. The Country Program Framework, or CPF, pilot program is part of the FOA's 2022 to 2026 CPF allocation. Some $200,000 in assistance to the Bahamas. Minister of Agriculture, Marine Resources and Family Island Affairs, Clay Sweeting, spoke to the importance of the digital village as it will close the gap between New Providence and the Family Islands and will also help boost emerging markets. Um, the digital village is something I'm very excited about. Um, I'm big on technology. Um, I, I believe that uh, it is a way to help to bring the family islands closer to the capital okay. and also to help um, with emerging markets and to connect not just national but international as well. The project is expected to provide access to apps, e-commerce and other innovative technologies used to boost agriculture development. The country programming framework is used by the Food and Agricultural Organization to define short and medium term responses to the needs of member countries in the pursuit of their national development objectives. FAO Representative Dr. Crispin Marrera says the signing of this document is symbolic and solidifies a commitment between the government of the Bahamas and FAO while ensuring access and availability of safe and nutritious food. Today the signing of this instrument of collaboration and cooperation is symbolic. It solidifies a commitment between the government of Bahamas and FAO to strengthen and further our collaboration. It also represents FAO's legitimate contribution to the Bahamas national development. In particular, it articulates our commitment to join, to continue joint efforts in ensure one, access to an availability of safe and nutrition food and health diets. Second, sustainable and inclusive agri-food systems and agriculture value chain development to achieve prosperous and inclusive societies among the family islands. The principle of FAO's strategic framework 2022 to 2031 
focuses on the transformation to more efficient, inclusive, resilient, and sustainable agri-food systems for better production, better nutrition, and better environment, leaving none behind. The Royal Bahamas Defense Force, the RBDF, and the Bahamas National Trust, the BNT, recently signed a memorandum of understanding signifying the long-standing partnership between the two organizations to protect the Bahamas' natural resources. The BNT's mandate includes managing national parks to protect the Bahamas' natural resources through science, education, conservation, and enforcement. The Royal Bahamas Defense Force has long played an integral role in supporting the BNT's mission by assisting with enforcement in national parks. In particular, the, the MOU recognizes the continued presence of the Royal Bahamas Defense Force at the historic Exuma Keys Land and Sea Park, the oldest land and sea park in the world and one of the first marine protected areas in the Caribbean. The park is a complete no-take zone, meaning under no circumstances is any fishing, conking, shelling, or lobstering allowed and requires high levels of patrolling and enforcement. Despite the Royal Bahamas Defense Force's well-established presence at the Exuma Key Land and Sea Park, working alongside the Bahamas National Trust, an MOU has never been officially signed between the two organizations until now. There are 32 national parks across the Bahamas. And finally, in the past, there were the usual career paths like doctors, lawyers, accountants, teachers, farmers, police officers, and the like. And while many of those are still popular career choices today, the spectrum of choices for today's high school and college graduates, particularly females, has greatly expanded. In this next report, we take a look at career opportunities in aviation, particularly drone aviation. These days, when we speak of pilots, we're not just talking airplanes or helicopters. We can now add drone pilots to that list. Perla Cordero is the Chief Operations Officer of Bella Wings Aviation, a drone solution company that believes drones will one day play an integral role in everyday life. She believes it all begins with education. And that means staying ahead of the game with the rapidly growing, ever-evolving industry of drone technology. And it all stems from education, that in order to create a sustainable future in this industry, we tap into the community of educational leaders, introducing and sharing the fine capabilities of drones so that we open doors for opportunities. And as drone technology evolves, it is our duty as industry leaders to establish an educational platform to seek and seed experts with pure knowledge and experience in order to sustain. Bella Wings was invited to the Bahamas in March by Bluefield Farms to assist with a drone demonstration hosted by the Inter-American Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture. The event highlighted how drones can be used to enhance farming, food production, and food deliveries, similar to Anne-Marie Davis, wife of Prime Minister Philip Davis, who while in Rwanda at the Commonwealth Heads of Government meetings advocated for more fair and equal employment for women, Ms. Cordero is seeking the same in the field of drone aviation. This also means including and opening doors for more women to seek a position in this field of aviation, even as pilots, that of whom only make up less than 5%. Those numbers sincerely need change. And I say this as a proud member of Women in Aviation International, dedicated to inspiring and encouraging women to pursue an education or career in aviation. Ms. Cordero gave examples of the many opportunities and uses for drone pilots in the emerging industry. The aviation industry across the board only continues to grow. Drones itself are proliferating the airspace, and that's because their capabilities are beyond imaginable, paving the way for a growing community of engineers, pilots, researchers, instructors, mentors, and the list goes on. Search and rescue mapping and surveillance, protecting our islands from illegal fishery and poaching, advertising, delivery of critical cargo, such as medicine and medical supplies. And my favorite of our services, the drone light show. Drones are not just the present, they are most certainly the future. And that'll do it for your JCN Evening News. Once again, I'm Jerino Saunders. Thanks for joining us. This segment of the news has been brought to you by Sun Oil Limited.